Jackie Tone, why does Melrose join the Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling? Hi. <laughs> Melrose joins the Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling because she, like me, has a need to be seen and a need to be the center of attention. I think we differ in our motivations, but we are the same. And I think just like our guttural needs of like, hey, look, I have value. Does anybody see me? And um, having been in the entertainment business since I'm nine, I'm well into my 30s now, this is sort of my first big job. And I sort of had that Melrose vibe in my 20s of just like competitive with other women and being out for myself and you know all of that. And then now as I get a little bit older, I think I obviously understand, certainly due to the power of GLOW, um, how important it is to have a sisterhood and support other women and love other women. Um, that's sort of a sideways answer, but the reason Melrose joins GLOW is because she doesn't really have anything else going on. Like she makes it, like I'm in every, I'm in every White Snake video, like don't worry about me. But if that was true, she wouldn't be there with these other, I was gonna say, um, you know, for lack of a better term, like they're like the bad news bears. She's just like, who are, if she had as much going on as she claimed, there's no way she would sit around with these people that she's judging. She's just like them. They all just want to be included and seen and valued like the rest of us. And how do you think Glow changes her outlook, her personality? Um, that was my sideways answer to question one, sort of. I think she changes because in the beginning, she really is out for herself and she is willing to call out another woman's, I just got chills. She is willing to call out another woman's trauma for her own betterment. I know about you, bitch, I come, you know what I mean? And that whole, she's not afraid to do whatever she can and stomp on whoever she needs to, to get where she needs to go. And I think over the course of the season, she does learn that she's nothing without this sisterhood and they do work with each other and for each other. And I think wrestling is a huge part of that because you, it sounds silly, you can't wrestle alone. I mean, sort of a metaphor for life, um, you go into Marshalls and there's just a sign that's like, you can't wrestle alone. You're like, did Jackie just steal that line from a Marshalls picture? My point is, you have to you have to be a team you have to support each other otherwise you are guaranteed to fail and i think melrose learns that i learned that as an actor as a human being woman in my 30s it's it's all very parallel everything that goes on we're all i talk to the girls and we're all sort of learning the same things our characters are learning as a trip so tell me about the wrestling. Like, had you done any before the show? That's a hard no. So go ahead and give you a fast and hard no on that. Um, I remember I went in on the first day of training, and that's sort of my insecurity and my need to, like, lead with the joke and make everyone else feel better and have an icebreaker. I walked in on the first day of training, and we do four weeks of wrestling training with this wrestling hero named Travel Guerrero Jr., who's from a legacy um, a family legacy. And I walk in on the first day and they're teaching us, you know, just normal things and uh, we, like we're somersaults, things that seem obvious and easy, but just to get us comfortable in the ring. And I walk in and we're all introducing ourselves and I go, I just want everybody to feel comfortable here today because I guarantee you I am worse at this than all of you. And now they all make fun of me to this day because it turns out I can wrestle. And I didn't know that, and if it weren't for this show, I would never have gotten an opportunity to learn that or really lift the limitations that I had set on myself as a person, as a woman. Like, I, I'm, I'm a, my dog is right next to me. I am, let me just pick him up because he's not going to shut up. Come on, Glenn, meet the people. Oh. Do, 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 do. He gets really still when I pick him up. Is the ADD just staggering right now? Okay, so the point is that we tell ourselves stories our whole lives of the things we can and can't do and the things we are and are not capable of. And I just was a person who wasn't an athlete. And I could sing and I could dance and I could play instruments and I'm funny and I'm a clown. And 
I'm shedding all of that as I get older and learning how to wrestle and learning how to be part of a team and feeling like a powerful woman has really helped me, you know, I, I keep feeling cheesy because I'm a comic and I have trouble saying vulnerable real things, but really taking off the mask and, you know, lots of, lots of less finger guns at this point in my life because I'm just trying to experience it all as it as it comes and like stand in my power if that's okay to say oh that's really uncomfortable uh now i understand that the uh like you tried out for a number of different roles so how have the writers changed uh their original view of melrose based on your portrayal of it over the season well our writers are so incredible so i initially i tried out for ruth and I kept going in and I, I think they were considering me for Ruth certainly, but I think at that point I, I was really lucky because I think they just were like, this girl's interesting and we want her on this show. We're just not sure in what capacity. So I tried out for Jenny, the cheerleader. I don't think I read Sheila, but I think they like considered me briefly for it. Hard to know. And then I read, and then I read the Melrose scenes and she just is, I don't, I'm not sure how much of it they changed because of me or how much of it, it's hard to say, but with all of our cast, they really play to our strengths. And we are so incredibly lucky for that because it makes obviously us look way better, but it makes the whole show look better. I mean, if you have a person who's a dancer and you let them dance, it's like, I mean, that's not me. I'm not quite the dancer, but you know, um, as far as being musical or, having a potty mouth or being funny, they hear our voices and they write in a way that makes whatever words we're saying make sense coming out of our mouths. Does that make sense? It's like they, they look around and they go, who here is gonna say, well, where's your waitress in nursing home in Poland? She's gonna say that, Jackie's gonna say that. So um, yeah, I don't know if I'm really quite answering it or if I'm being circuitous, but it's like, I think we all work together. I think our writers see our strengths and they write for them. And then we see what they're giving us and we try to rise to the occasion. What about, did they ever go like a step further and ask you like about an idea they have for the character, ask you if you think it'd be right? A couple things about that. We have character meetings because they want to make sure that we're comfortable with whatever they're asking of us. So they're never gonna just say like, hey, um, you show up on a Tuesday and it's like, it's boob day for you, I'm gonna show your boobs. You know, it's more like, hey, we're gonna sit down, are you comfortable with this? Is this something, you know, these are moves you're gonna have to do, these are conversations you're gonna have to have as your character, how do you feel about all this? And so it's so, I mean, that's the joy of having a show run by women, written by mostly women, directed by mostly women, and acted by mostly women. I mean, it is, again, at the risk of sounding cheesy, being on this show is like being in a hug. You're just like, it's hard to be uncomfortable there because, he doesn't live there and you know so it's that's that's one answer to the question and the other answer is they definitely hear what we do in training and i mean at the risk of sounding you know too much information all of us get on the same cycle so they wrote that into the episode where i'm like um we're finally a team <laughs> drumming about how we're finally a team because we're all like throwing tampons to each other and like that's really what happens with women so it's like it's the bigger picture relationship stuff that happens with among women but it's also this little like these micro cosmic if that's the right word these micro examples of things that happen between women and so they do definitely take from our lives they take from when we're in training what we're having challenges with you know um yeah we're always borrowing from each other. Uh, now tell me about getting nominated for a SAG award for best uh, ensemble in a comedy series for GLOW. Hooray! Um, that was incredible. That was truly, it's really, it's so empowering to be part, it's so exciting to be on a TV show, period. Right? I've been acting since I'm nine. 
and hustling and going on auditions and trying to find that one role that's not either going to a name or going to, you know, it's going to someone else or whatever, you know, this is a, it's not migrant labor, but this is a very emotionally challenging business to be in. And to finally, you know, you're a little kid when, I mean, I was, when I, when I was dreaming about these things, like, and I'm going to go to an awards show and I'm going to wear a gown and it's, then you finally get there. And the reason you get there is because you're part of a show that's really adding to the social dialogue and really is helping people and inspiring people. It's doubly exciting. Like, I just wanted to get there. I've been acting and working my entire life just to get there, whatever that means, right? And of course, once you're there, you have your eye on the next carrot dangling in front of you. But my goal has always been, I wanna get there. I wanna be in the gown and I wanna be on the carpet and I wanna be recognized as an actor who has been just working and hustling for so long. And um, then you get there and it's a double whammy because the reason you get there is because of glow which is a show that we hope, that we think, that people are telling us is making a difference in people's lives. And as I said, adding dialogue to a conversation that is crazily overdue as far as you know, the female empowerment movements that are going on right now, that's a perfect time for GLOW. Do you find that it's easier to get work after GLOW after you've been nominated for a SAG award? Can you? Know, put that on your resume or is it still kind of just the same process of going in for auditions and uh, whatever it is well i wear a t-shirt and a hat that say sag nominee and as i walk into rooms i yell i'm a sag nominee uh sometimes i do cry and then just leave so it is harder to get the part once i've left as none of that is true um i it's double it's both you know like there's a movie director that i love so much i'm not going to mention you know and he called me and offered me, he had seen Glow season one, and he offered me this incredible role of like this comedic rocker girl who sings in his film, and we couldn't make the dates work because we were shooting in season two. You know, that's a bummer, but of course I wouldn't have been given that opportunity if he didn't see me on Glow season one. And then knew that I sang and stuff like that. Um, but then on the flip side of that, I do totally go on random auditions all the time that feel exactly the same as it felt before I had this job, where I'm like, I don't think that guy looked up from his computer. Why am I, you didn't even, like the same sort of challenge of being an actor where you can feel small or feel not seen or feel like you worked so hard on a thing and maybe nobody even watched the tape. I mean, all of that is still very much part of my life and part of the life of an actor. and. You know, I think we think it's gonna change, but I have friends who are eons more successful than me in huge movies, and they're just like, damn it, they wouldn't even see me for The Hunger Games. And you're like, yeah, that's, you know what I mean? That's huge. So it's like every level we're at, like I have my friends who are non-union, who are like, if I could just get a commercial agent, then you get it. If I could just get a theatrical agent, then you get it. If I could just get a manager. I mean, it's always, this. these are our lives. These are These are the lives of an actor, so I think, when I'm talking about it pragmatically, I'm separate from it and I can go like, wow, cool, I see how lucky I am and how incredible this all is. But when you're in it, you still go, well, what are, you know, are there other things? Are there other cool things I can do? Because of course we want to all be doing it all, or I do. And what about like from the outside, you know, I watch every episode and then I see, you know, you're always there but you're still credited as like a guest star. I don't know if it's different in season two. Is that just like a reality of working on a Netflix ensemble show versus like a network ensemble show or does it make any difference to you? Um, well, it certainly makes a difference to me. Um, how do I politically answer this? Ah, I said no more finger guns, I lied. Um, by the way, this hair wave is new to me. That's why I keep obsessing with it. I like don't know which way it goes. It's all very exciting. See, now I'm doing bits to not answer the question you asked. It's going great. The point is, a <laughs> hard thumbs up. Um, I think season one, and this is, I think, more of a Netflix thing, but we, what ended up happening was there's 14 of us, and the show didn't have a huge budget. And so they were saying, like, look, this is what it's going to be for season one. 
And if we get a season two, this character is going to grow and become a series regular. But for season one, we just don't have, people don't know what the show is going to be yet. So they're not throwing money at us as a show, not me personally. So when we went in, they were like, except for I think Allie and Betty and maybe two other girls, everybody else was counted as a guest star because it was season one. They didn't know what was going on. And then for season two, I'm a series regular. And what should viewers be thinking about going into season two relating to your character? I think there's a lot more growing for Melrose. I think what's so exciting about Glow, and Betty Gilpin said it best and I'm gonna botch it, but being on this show, you get to be all the crazy lunatics that live inside your head. Carol and Linda, and she makes up all these insane names of, I mean, those are regular names. But all of the women that live in our heads, the way they behave, the ones that are like crazy sexualized Melrose, she gets to play. The one that's like this devious little bitch who will cut anybody any chance she gets, she gets to play. The one that's vulnerable and called out because she's nothing and you're only being, you're only trying to act so cool because you're actually really insecure and you're not gonna make any friends acting like that, she gets to play. So to be, to get to be so many women, it's just such, it's like a crazy, it's a crazy dream. And I think, it's a fever dream actually. And then I think for season two, Melrose, she's definitely more part of the team season two. She's up to cahoots with everybody. So instead of being like standing there with her arms crossed and being like, who here can I F over to get myself further? She's like, all right, what do I have to do to bring this team up? She's planning like, oh, I can't really say, but I kind of can. This show is coming out soon. When when is this airing? Is this live? Is everyone who wants to watch this watching it right now? No, it'll be a couple days from now. Okay, perfect. Well, now they're watching that and us say, okay, cool. Um, yeah, I think um, she's much more of a team player. Like she just is rallying the ladies every chance she gets. Hey, they're, they're going to try and F us over. So we got to do this first. And instead of doing it herself, she brings she brings all the girls in, most of the girls. Okay, and finally, tell me what has been your favorite stunt in the first two seasons of Glow. My favorite stunt, like what, uh, like what wrestling move I get to do, or yes, like emotional stunt. Definitely the miscarriage episode of season one. Like that was the best stunt ever, stealing the ketchup and um, messing with Cherry after she almost suffocates me, asphyxiates me rather. Um, that was probably my my favorite stunt, and then also that episode as a whole because I really got to go through the whole thing. But that's more how I feel as an actor as opposed to how I feel as like a physical kind of lady warrior. Now uh, I did learn in between season one and season two, uh, Melrose definitely wrestles more in season two, and uh, I won't say who, but. I do learn how to body slam and I do take and I do take a girl down. So that's pretty cool. I'm one of the smaller girls and so when we were training, they were we were learning how to body slam, or some people were, and they asked me if I wanted to learn and I said, I don't know, that looks really hard. And they were like, I bet you can do it. And I was like, Well, am I gonna have to body slam someone in the show? And they go, Well, if you learn how to do it, maybe. And I just jumped in the ring. I picked up our trainer, got under her and just lifted her on my head. I mean, it's with a lot of help of her jumping. And I just slammed her on the ground. And when I realized I could do it, all the girls stood up and cheered because we're the biggest cheerleaders for each other. Hate on us if you want, it's real. So we, we all, everybody got up and cheered. And then I instantly got down to the ground and started weeping, weeping. And then it was a cuddle puddle and 14 girls were on top of me and I couldn't breathe and I was hysterical crying, you know, because I couldn't believe I did a thing that I, had told myself I couldn't. And that's what a little glow does. Wow. Well, thanks, Jackie, for being so engaging. And uh, we look forward to seeing Glow uh, at the Emmys this summer and also the new season on Netflix. I look forward to seeing Glow at the Emmys, too!